Standout Artist Podcast, showcasing the most unique and innovative musicians of Austin, Texas. Brought to you by entrepreneur and professional drummer Andy Jaffs. Stay tuned and stand out. Welcome to the Standout Artist Podcast, the show where we interview some of Austin, Texas's most unique and innovative musicians and find out what they do differently. Uh, today I have Steve Zamora on the podcast. He is the drummer for the, get this, indie psychedelic pop rock band, Futon Blonde. <laughs> Sounds about right. Uh, yeah, that's right. So uh, excited to have you on, man. Excited to dive into your mind. I know you're doing a ton of stuff around Austin these days. And uh, yeah, pleasure to have you on. Oh, thanks for having me, Andy. It's, you know, it's great to be here. I'm, I'm kind of new to the podcast world. So yeah, me too, man. Totally. This is, uh, you know, this is a fun new experience. Awesome, dude. Um, well, not to get into like too deep of a, com- um, a question like right off the bat, but I know you're doing like a whole bunch of things. Like obviously, Futon Blonde is your main band, but you've got some other projects and everything. And you're the drummer for Futon Blonde, but I know you, you, you don't really, you, you have other things. You know, you, you're, you're not just, you're just a drummer, right? You have some other skills and things, but like what does it mean to kind of go full circle with what I'm trying to get here? Like what does it really mean to be a musician uh, for you? Like, Hmm. To what does it mean to be a musician? You know, I you know I um. I think a musician, first off, you need, you need to appreciate music. You need to appreciate the 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 aspects of um, of of music. You know, you read rhythm, melody, harmony, and all that. And as a drummer, I I tend to focus really more first off on like rhythms when I'm listening to music. But I've learned over time, or I guess I've always appreciated like the other aspects, like the melody and harmony and stuff. But I always like zero in on the rhythm. But like as I've kind of started learning to play like other instruments, I play a little bit of guitar. I've le- been learning to play bass guitar and like piano and trying to like mm. expand my my musical realm, my world, my understanding of music. Like it it does like help um, to understand like uh, the full scope. And like to be able to to appreciate like all the aspects of a of of the music sound that you're listening to, uh, rather than just like I mean I think I started out as being just like a drum nerd yeah. and really focusing on the drum aspect, but like you know growing growing as a musician is kind of learning to appreciate all styles of music and like kind of understand like the finding the merit in every style and like what you know p- finding what's good. In, in every style of music is like I kind of I have a hard time answering a question like oh what what style of music do you like it's because I yeah I kind of like appreciate and a lot of people say like, oh I love all music and and I can definitely pick you know cherry pick some some uh, music that I don't like particularly yeah. or some particular artists that I don't that I don't really like um, necessarily enjoy listening to but uh, I tend to be able to really pick out aspects of music even if I don't like it as a whole I can pick out like certain things that I like about it and you know and uh I think being a musician is being able to appreciate you know what what uh, other musicians and artists are trying to to convey in their music and yeah. it's you generally just like have a good time and <laughs> in, and enjoy what you're listening to and in this moment you know you're hearing this these sounds and like how they're making you feel Right. And um, I try and keep an open mind with that, and not be so, so like uh, judgmental <laughs> about music. Right. So it kind of <laughs> sounds like it's a, kind of an exploration, an adventure for you, trying to just discover these new golden nuggets along the way. Right? Yeah. 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 Awesome. True. Yeah, I, I mean, that kind of what I got from you there. Like, yeah. You got, like it kind of sounds like you're just trying to find different things to appreciate and discover from from the music that you're doing right now. Yeah, there's a lot to learn. And yeah. like, that's the beauty of, of, of music and like being yeah. a musician is like, you never, you never like done. You never like reach the point where you're like as good as you're gonna get. Cause yeah. there's, there's always people better than you. Mm-hmm. There's always people that you, re- that you admire that can do something that you can't and something to strive for. Um, there's always other instruments to learn other styles of music that you've never even heard of before that can just totally like blow your mind and and be something to inspire you in a new way like it's it's a definitely a treasure trove and endless you know <laughs> bottomless pit of 
of exploration. That's what's exciting about it for me. That's dope. Yeah, awesome. So how are you expressing yourself musically right now? I mean, you know about Futon Blonde, but like, tell us a little bit about your uh, projects and, and what you're working on. Yeah, well, thanks for asking. I, um, I do drums in two other groups other than Futon Blonde. I play okay. the drums and, um, you know, and the, going on with the theme of like, you know, appreciating all styles of music. My other two projects are vastly different from the, the Futon sound. Right. the futon blonde sound so i play in a group called die mart which is more of like a heavy sort of punk thrashy um type of group so we we play fast and we play hard and we play sort of raw and sloppy but like with a lot of emotion and it's loud and it's ruckus and it's like um it's a it's a totally different vibe from what the futon blonde you know, Stripe Spore, I think, and, and, mm. and, uh, and then I also play with a group called Burrito Seagull, and we're, awesome. uh, we're a sort of a country group, it's like sort of, um, so country soul, psychedelic, we, we kind of, we're, we've been shying away from calling it cosmic country, uh, just because that, that term's getting thrown around a lot, but we do a lot of, like, sort of New Orleans funk, thrown in with some sort of jazzy tunes and then some classic country stuff and like uh think like shell silverstein a lot of sort of lyrically driven songs and our songwriter micah hill is a, is quite a wordsmith and is you know he writes some really really funny um humorous lyrics and like do, does a lot of stuff that's sort of like you know personal songs to him but can be really relatable for a lot of people and uh and we we're also like trying to become like a dancey honky tonk group. So we like, um, it, it's totally different from the Die Mart punk and the Futon Blonde indie rock. And when we got this sort of like country, folky, funky, soulful uh, mm -hmm. thing going with Burrito Seagull. So that, I mean, for me to play in those three groups, it really does kind of scratch like a little bit of an itch in, uh, for me because I love all, all the different, all those three different styles of music and right. um it keeps me busy for sure but it at the same time i feel like uh it's really uh, helping me grow mm. as like a as a drummer and a percussionist as a musician in general is like kind of yeah. being able to wear the different hats um it's been it's been challenging but uh it's fun that's great man <laughs> yeah so you've really got a range of different styles there is, is that kind of for you always being the goal to just have like some some good range and different ways to express yourself or is it just kind of naturally progressed like that it's sort of been a natural progression i've been i'm really bad at sort of uh, setting goals for myself and right. and driving towards them i'm more of like chaotic uh in how i operate is like i i've oh i grew up you know as a texan uh, getting exposed to a lot of country music and so I've always appreciated country music and I love mm. you know the classic greats of Willie Nelson, Will and Jennings and yeah. Merle Haggard, Johnny Cash and those guys so like I've always loved country music and so uh, part of me has always wanted to play in a country band and so just kind of like dumb luck meeting some guys in town that that were interested in doing that same thing mm -hmm. and um happened to be the bass player that i play with in futon blonde uh bang goodman and he is just as much of like a musical uh i don't know i don't know what you call he's just like into so many different genres and he plays in multiple bands in town as well and him and i both kind of have have that sort of interest in in just like absorbing as much music whatever the style like if it if it uh you know if, if it resonates with us it's something that we kind of like will will uh, go after and so he was was uh playing with micah hill the lead singer of burrito seagull mm -hmm. and had been playing for like a few years with them when they decided they kind of wanted to take the project into this sort of country uh down this country avenue mm -hmm. and micah had like a slew of new country songs that he'd written and so i was like they asked if I was interested to do it, and it was just, that's kind of how how that occurred. It was just sort of like talking about it. They said, "Hey, we got these songs. We want to we want to like work on them and start playing honky tonks, do some dancing tunes." And uh, I was down for that, so I was like, "Let's do it, guys." 
Um, that's kind of how that worked out. With um, the punk rock group, Die Mart. Now, this is like a sort of a second uh, grouping, a uh, second time that this band has sort of formed. We were a, a, a band prior, a few years back. Um, and this is a reforming of that group. But, like, I've always loved punk rock music, too. It's like, and I, I those are some of the funnest shows to, to go to. Right. It's like the, the most high energy uh, shows where, like, the audience is just jumping around mm -hmm. and, like, pushing each other and, and, like, really, like, getting into it with, like, the bands are, like, yelling at the audience. The audience is yelling back at the band. And it's like, those are such fun experiences. And I, I used to go to shows like that all the time. I mean, I still do, actually. But, um, I think wanting to be a part of that is was what kind of uh, drove me to, to get involved or at least like, you know, have that interest in mind and kind of just keep my options open. And if, you know, the project, if I meet people that are, are, are like thinking of doing the same thing and we have like kind of a similar mindset, it seems like uh, I, I try to like give everything a shot, I guess, first mm -hmm. off and see, and see if it works, you know, it's it's hard music um playing with groups is like forming a relationship it's like it is a serious relationship with people it's like you're right. spending to spend a lot of time with these people yeah and you got to be able to get along with them and have similar uh interests and similar personality or not necessarily similar personalities but you got to be uh be able to cohabitate in it to a certain respect and like um and so that's important too i know i'm rambling a little bit no, here this but is like really cool. uh yeah, yeah. I, I feel like most of the, I, I do get asked to play as a drummer, you know, bands are always kind of looking for drummers and they, drummers tend to be like, you know, playing in multiple bands a lot just cause, uh, I don't know if it's like a status thing you're trying to play in the most bands. That's not what it is for me, but, um, yeah. I, I do like to, I do like to jam and like, I, I uh, have a hard time saying no when someone invites me to, yeah. to play music with them and. You know, I'm willing to give anything a shot and I'm trying to get better at it these days is like kind of telling people like, I don't think I have time for this or, totally. or that, but you know, you can jam a few times with people and it's, uh, it's almost like you're going on a date, you know, you're seeing how's this, how's this going to work? <laughs> how, how do we like, do we read off each other? Well, like, yeah. can we, can we predict like what they're going to do or do with this, this like, and, and sometimes it clicks like really quick. And sometimes it takes a little bit of work and then it eventually you, you it, it starts to click. Mm. Um, and then sometimes like maybe it just, the, it's not working and, uh, it, maybe it just wasn't the right time for y'all to, to meet and, right. and play music together at that time. You just like, your heads are in different places. It's very nuanced and it's, mm. it's not like a, it's hard to, it's hard to say what, when, what, you know, what works and what doesn't, um, I think some of the greatest groups in history have had a special chemistry chemistry among the members, yeah. you know, that enabled them to to be great. You know, they not only did they play great music together, but they created it together, and they all got along together really well. Where like you, know, you would see, at least you would think that they were good friends, and mm -hmm. that they would create this music. Um, yeah. Sort of like spontaneously, but uh, you know, I, th I guess I think of Led Zeppelin yeah, in a yeah. way when I'm thinking of this. It's like, you know, the, uh, it's just like dumb luck that these guys get together, yeah. or in some ways, or um, you know, the, the Beatles, or like how they, they all happen to get together and just like, mm. I mean, I'm sure there's, you know, there's tons of as tons of aspects that are tons of reasons why certain bands make it and certain ones don't but um well, yeah we're all striving to find that kind of perfect chemical reaction right yeah you know, from all the elements that you get in a band and i mean it, i mean it is a lot to do with luck but i think you know if we think about it like the reason why we like those bands so much is they're so raw and authentic right and that's because they you know just this is what i kind of how i feel about it just like i think those people in those bands, they really have a strong sense of who they are and they're, they're in line with that. And when you're like that, you tend to attract more people that are like that. So I feel yeah. like, you know, as musicians, a goal that we can strive for is just becoming more and more like ourselves. 
and then the more people like that will attract. That's literally my my journey right now. Like I'm, you, I'm, I'm not in a band right now. I'm I'm still looking, but I, I'm still defining who I am and mm -hmm. coming in, into more alignment. You're with, absolutely with, right. Yeah, you know, so authenticity it's, it's, is yeah. is very important. Yeah, and you gotta be enjoying the music that you're playing. Right. Because if you're not enjoying it. And if you're not enjoying being on stage with the people that you're playing with, like the audience can tell. Yeah. And if you're not having fun, like they're sure as hell not going to have fun. No. Um, I think you're exactly right. And authenticity is, is very important. So you gotta, you gotta like your, you know, you gotta like the people you're playing in a band with and yeah. like, you gotta like the music that you're playing. Or at least like you Unless know you, you maybe to don't make, to do it for a living. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe you don't like every aspect of it, or you yeah. don't like the particular gig you're you're playing. Right. Um. But you got to find like reasons that that keep you doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, if I'm playing, uh, if I'm playing like I don't know, I played in in several groups over throughout the years, and I you know I I have of course played in shows where. Um, maybe it's not like the most ideal setting or the crowd is, is sort of meager or it's hot outside or I like, I, I don't feel very well or whatever. There's a particular song in the set that I, you know, I'm like, ah, I don't want to play this song anymore. <laughs> but like, you, you know, if you can zero in on one thing, even in that one song that you, that you don't like, you can zero in on the one thing that, you know, as, as far as, as a drummer, at least it's mm -hmm. like, just find the, the groove if you can find like one aspect of, of that song that, that can just keep you focused and, yeah. and, uh, um, then I think that authentic authenticity will, will come through as I, I guess as, as a musician, that's kind of your job is to, yeah. is to, to perform. Make you, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Um, no, this is great, man. I, I really like as well how it seems like one band, um, what is it? The, uh, uh, seagull burrito. The burrito that, seagull, yeah. yeah. That, that, that one kind of came from Three Tom Blonde, but then the other one was more just like, man, I really want to do this, and you take like a little bit of an intentional thing towards it, and it kind of sounds like from that intention, you started meeting the right people with that. Was that kind of how, how it rolled out? Well, yeah, and maybe I didn't describe how that band formed the best way. It's all right, man. But just, it was like, a, it, it did come from like my love of playing punk music, and like uh, when I was at, um, you know, learning to play drums. I was I was kind of self a self taught drum drum kit player. I played like in concert band in middle school and high school and drum line and stuff. But like I started jamming. I got a drum set when I was sixteen years old and mm. started like jamming with friends and like we were all very you know bad at our instruments. But it was fun to play loud and to play mm. fast and and like that's that's you know the punk rock is is was essentially like, you know, a lot of mm. people that didn't really know how to play instruments, just <laughs> playing music right. and creating yeah. music and creating yeah. art out of that, uh, raw, just that raw, uh, will to just create some sounds. Yeah. And, um, that's kind of, that became, you know, something that I really loved doing was just like making the most absurd, like crazy noises with my friends, whether it sounded like uh like crap or not um and so i've always loved that aspect of punk rock music and uh you know i got involved with dime mart these guys were like some really close friends of mine from a previous band that i played with years ago and those guys actually sought me out like they needed a drummer for their group and they would come to my old to my shows and they would just, like they kept coming to the shows and they kept talking to me after the, mm. after the shows. And like, I ended up like, you know, becoming friends with them. I didn't know them before. We'd maybe met like at, at a, a prior, like at a party or something, but they knew that they wanted a, I needed a drummer and they like, they set out to like, uh, bring me into the fold. And so they came, they kept coming to my shows. I played in a band called Voluptuous Neighbors at that time. And they, you know, just kind of, I guess they wooed me and they, you know, <laughs> They kept inviting me to come jam, and I, you know, maybe I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm down, I'm down, I'm down, but I never, like, it took a while, I finally went and did it, and, like, you know, no commitments or anything, I, you know, just a jam session sort of thing, but it was fun, and it was super raw, and these guys, uh, 
you know, they, they made it fun. And uh, Chris was the lead singer, this guy, Chris Reynosa, who I love. He's the lead singer of Die Mart. Like, he was their neighbor, and they decided they wanted to form this band. And um, they brought me in to be their drummer. And the rehearsals were super different from any other, like, like band I'd, like, really played with as far as, like, how the songs would be formed. But it was fun, and it was exciting. And um, so those guys have since become, like, really good friends of mine. And so when we formed Die Mart, it was just, like, really it was just a thing. We kind of got together during the pandemic here because uh, Butch Pilot was the previous band broken up. And it was just a desire to to start hanging out and playing music again. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have any, like, goal in mind other than to just, like, kind of see our, see our boys hang out with our dudes and, um, you know, make some loud noise. And then a few songs started forming. And then before we knew it, we had, like, four or five songs. And we're like, okay, I guess we need a, a band name now. And and uh, that's kind of how Die Mart... Um, was formed. I mean, the band the band name took a while for us to come up with, but nice. uh, we we got it. We got <laughs> wow. it. Proud where, of where, it where did you get the name from? The name actually comes from uh, well, so uh, Chris, our lead singers, you know, grew up in like South Austin and uh, near like Brody Lane, and there's like um, a food mart over there, like a convenience store called Brody. Uh, Brody Food Mart okay. and that's got a big like lit up sign and there was a period of time like many, many years ago where half of the sign the lights had like broken oh, yeah. and so all it was lit up was the word Die Mart <laughs> okay. and this uh, is actually kind of like a internet uh, meme or something if you search Die Mart you'll see you can see a lot of photos from that time that people took and posted right. on online and there were some, some sort of memes about that but that uh was something that Chris already had tattooed on his arm, uh -huh. actually, Die Mart. Cool. And uh, Roberto, our bass player, I think just kind of, we were just spitballing ideas, still throwing things out, nothing worked, and he like kind of saw that on Chris's arm, was like, hey, that's a pretty good band name. Uh, uh, like, Die Mart, yeah? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> go with Die Mart. Sometimes it just comes <laughs> to you, hey? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Nice, man. So, um, yeah, it sounds like you've been you know, around doing a bunch of stuff as a musician for a while and you're always kind of learning and growing yeah. what would you say is a uh, uh like a your main challenge as a musician that you've had to overcome or maybe still overcoming right now mm. right now my biggest challenge is time is time management yeah amen to that and um i get into the you know i, I get myself into situations where i'm like too where i'm so booked with the rehearsals and then I still work, and I'm I'm kind of a I'm a, a little crazy person. I work like multiple like part time jobs, mm. and while I'm playing with these three bands and got rehearsals going on, so I've got, all, you know, I'm booking myself for rehearsals every week, and then and then filling in these part time jobs here and there, and then I'm like uh, realizing that I haven't don't really have any time to like do like solo practice which is like so important. Yeah. And so I'm rolling into rehearsals without having practiced uh, at all before, like the, since the last time we got together as a group. And this is not a, a good way to, to be in a group. And if any of my bandmates are listening right now, they're probably like, what the fuck, Steve? <laughs> oh, sorry. I don't know if I can, no, you can say, say any can curse words on here in yeah. the, the, the audience. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, just, you know, just six year olds that's, listening to this podcast. that's yeah. my biggest challenge right now. I just realized, yeah, I know that, like, in, you know, solo practice is so important as a drummer, especially just to keep keep yourself, like, your blood flowing, keep your muscles loose, yeah. keep your, your, your hands fresh, like, um, and, but even like, cause I am playing a lot that does, uh, you know, it is good to, for keeping like my, my technique fresh and my hands loose. But if I'm not, uh, working on things on my own, it's, it's definitely like, um, not taking the songs to the next level. You know, there's definitely things you get from playing with the group and practice that, mm -hmm. that, um, you don't get by practicing like by doing solo rehearsal but like the solo stuff is is, is that should be all of our responsibility in the group to like practice on our own yeah and then go to the 
to the rehearsal with everyone like afterward and and like yeah uh, it's almost like having another band rehearsal as yourself you know you yeah just yeah solo stuff you know so you're in four bands you're in the three that you're in and you Gotta do and own. you gotta do yeah, your own yeah. stuff, cause, yeah. yeah, cause uh, you, all three of those bands, <laughs> cause you don't want to make the same mistake like that you uh, did in the one practice, and then a week later make the same the same mistake again at the same yeah. song. Like the you have no excuse. Yeah, I, it's, and you know I'm realizing that now that I I need to uh, manage my time a little better. Yeah, I, it, it's tough though, man. Especially when you know, you work in jobs as well. Like I, I I've got a job, of course, outside of music, um, but it's. Yeah, I've, I've been in that position where you know you get to the rehearsal studio, you're just like fuck that, fuck it. <laughs> so, I mean, it always manages to work out. You shit, yeah. you, you shit yourself before, and you think you're just like you just like, oh man, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> but then you always seem to get through it. You know? That's yeah. true as well. And like but, I do also realize like uh, the things that I kind of nitpick about my own playing, or that I realize are mistakes, or like yeah. not as tight as I'd like them to be. Like they're really uh, maybe not necessarily as noticeable for other people and that's a, another thing that you know i think artists tend to be the own biggest critic but uh, that's what pushes you that's what pushes you to get better and right. and pushes you forward so it's you know it's not a bad thing but uh it is good to be easier on yourself yeah <laughs> yeah that's a, that's a tough one tough one for creatives you know? yeah um but uh yeah guys uh, if you guys listen out there you want some drummers to hire that won't practice for your rehearsal sessions this is me <laughs> <laughs> we got your back. No, we got it. Yeah, if you're a drummer and you're we listening, will, you, we will let you down, guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Complete money back guarantee. If, 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 if we raise your standards, then then we'll give you money back. Um, <laughs> love it. Um, but yeah, man, um, that's that's great. I think uh, I think that will relate to that. And um, what would you say you've developed as a musician that you would say is like your unique thing right now? I, I guess that's one thing that we're all striving for as musicians. Mm-hmm. Is, have something that, that makes us stand out? Have you kind of figured that out for yourself or um, ever thought about that? I guess I have, I haven't really thought about that or I'm not sure if I've figured that out yet. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's, it could be that I can play these different styles of music and I feel like I play my technique is slightly different with mm. when I play like a country shuffle, like a, a two step shuffle. Like it, my technique is very different than when I'm hammering out like a fast punk rock, like mm. just groove, like playing as fast as possible, like sort of thrashy stuff. Like, and then when I'm doing like a real smooth, like futon blonde, like kind of funky groove, it's, mm. and I feel like I, I, I bring a different, uh, style and technique to each of the groups that you know what it what best lends itself to the music um and i don't know if i'm i don't think i'm unique at all in that regard but it's it is something that i i'm not sure if i see that many drummers that that in town that play in a in a punk rock country right. country band and a indie rock band uh, so just your range kind of yeah, thing. Maybe, yeah, maybe yeah right yeah. my range i mean and i don't think i'm all that special and i know there's a lot of drummers that are out there that are, you know, just yeah. as good, if not, and better than me. And I admire, like, so many players in town. Yeah. Um, I'm always, like, what's the beautiful thing about living in Austin is, like, any given night you go out and you can see, yeah. like, some really impressive musicians. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. And, and, it's, and sometimes it's, like, sort of a surprising and sad thing. It's like, man, these, these are some of the best players I've seen in a long time. And there's, like, nobody here. Yeah. in this room right now but you know i think that's just that's the, that's the life of a musician and um yeah you you play you play to the room yeah and, uh, well yeah i mean i was gonna ask you a little bit about that uh like um i think for a lot of musicians that may be moving to austin or people that are like up and coming they would consider what you have to be like a level of like made it you know because you're in three bands that kind of you know really allow you to fully express yourself right and you're gigging uh quite regularly so if someone's wanting to get to your 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 level and you know a place where they're just really you know fulfilling what they love to do like what would you advise you know people in that position Hmm. 
I guess, you know, it's, it's important to, to meet other musicians and it's important to, I mean, I hate using the word networking and, uh, and, um, but that's like creating a, um, community or getting, getting plugged in with like a community mm-hmm. be it. And there are multiple, uh, music communities. There's like so many music communities in Austin and, um, whether you, you like in like any style of music you, you find, you, you could probably, uh, meet dozens and dozens of people that are into that same, same style. And I, I, I would recommend going to the, sh- going to shows and not, and, you know, trying to talk to, you know, make a goal to just at least talk to one or two of the performers after their set and talk to them, get to know them. Don't like, you don't got to become friends instantly, but like, uh, you know, pick out a few artists that you really admire and just like start going to their shows and, and talking to them, like find, you know, try and meet, um, people at the clubs that are booking the shows. So like if you're, if you're in a band and you're trying to get your, your band booked, it, it's really difficult if you don't know, um, anyone in town, if you don't know other musicians, if you don't know bookers at venues, and, um, unfortunately, like, that's, it's kind of like, that's the, is the ticket is kind of like meeting people and becoming part of, of a community of people and working with people and, um, I, yeah, I feel like that's like what I've learned and it's taken me a long time and now you've, I've played in bands in town that struggled for a while to get even get gigs booked or like find other bands that would want to play they would invite us to play with them and it was um and I feel like a lot of that was because we were you know we would play our shows and uh at the time all of us had like you know early you had like you know, nine to five jobs or or like different you know full-time jobs doing other stuff and it's a struggle at you know to stay out late where you know where you tend to meet people and Mm -hmm. and where the you know socializing tends to occur like late at night here in the music scene and um um i guess like I i don't know i mean there's no like magic bullet for it but I would just suggest like meeting as many people as you can, putting yourself out there. You know, you you were you were going to those open jams, that, you know. Yeah, like, I still it's pop around. Like a few stone. of those that go on yeah. around town. Like that's a great way to meet people, um, and just being being open. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess you know I'm still figuring it out too. Like I, yeah. uh, you know doing it for a while I still love playing music and I'm getting a lot of playing a lot of gigs these days and that's you know it's a blessing Mm. it's like definitely definitely better than where I was at you know five years ago but yeah um you know it's always you always still want better gigs yeah you want more gigs you want to get paid more money you know know. you want to there's always someone uh, like below that's looking up at you like oh man I wish yeah you know when I say below I mean just like he's not at your level yeah so you know looking up at you like yeah. I want that and you're always looking at someone above you like, totally that, yeah it's know. always like that yeah, and, so you know <laughs> it, it's I mean it almost is so like uh, you know as long as you're aware of that and you yeah. just gotta have patience totally and you gotta not uh, you gotta have patience and you gotta be humble yeah you gotta not and enjoy what you're doing you gotta relax. enjoy what you're yeah. doing you gotta be humble yeah and don't look at it like a competition and don't try and tear other people down yeah um because everyone that's on that stage is like feeling the same things you are. Everyone that's performing around town is, is feeling the same thing you are. They're feeling, you know, like, you know, they're just, they're trying their best and they're, you know, they, uh, they all want to do, do better. And, um, I don't know where I was going to go with that. I was going to say something really motivational. Oh, uh, you were going to have like but... the most, the, the cream of the crap. <laughs> <laughs> But it's like, it's not a, like, I don't know, some people, it's nice to have a little competition, but like, yeah, it's, and it's, and I think that does kind of like push you to be better and strive to do more. 
For sure. But yeah. like, it doesn't help help anyone to to like talk shit about other bands or like mm. to be like, oh, why you know that band sucks? Why are they playing this this awesome bill? Like, it's like it's not what it's about, and no, that doesn't help anything. It's like, uh, yeah, I think you need to, you just need to be. Uh, Musicians need to be all be like helping each other out. I, I think, think we can like help each other out a little bit more. Yeah, yeah we can all yeah. help each other out a little more. Yeah, totally. You know, even in Austin, where it's a very collaborative, supportive community, I feel like we should do it more with the music world. You know, like I, I don't know how that would look necessarily, but I feel like everyone could probably do something a little bit better, a little bit bigger. You know. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I don't know how that would look, but yeah, I don't know. I think there's a lot of this, you know, there's a lot of people that they want to work in music and want to work in the music industry and right. a lot of uh, people that aren't musicians that love music and want to, want to help musicians and and so that's it's great to you know to you be able to meet people like that in, in around town and that's it's sort of like a symbiotic relationship people that love to book shows they're not musicians but they just love putting on events and they love right booking shows and like if you can meet people like that and just kind of get in the get in their radar then you know the next event they throw they might they might uh reach out and bring you in and um mm. you know uh another thing that wouldn't doesn't help hurt is like getting involved with some of the music venues in town are they hiring do you have any spare time like can you can you work you know like one or two nights a week at a club and just kind of like uh-huh. you know find you just get behind you Doing that is a really easy way to meet a lot of people. Not only do you meet the musicians that play at those clubs, you you meet uh, the uh, like bartenders at those clubs that are all like music lovers, and you learn like the bands that they like in town. You meet you know people mm-hmm. through them. Um, I think that's a really a really good way to get plugged in uh, into the music scene is to to try and work at a venue, just even if it's just part time. If they're hiring. Um, that's the other thing, like, yeah, whether they're hiring or not, but still, like, you know, you can strive, strive for that, it's like, get, start working in the scene in some way or another, and, um, being a part of it, um, in is probably the, yeah, yeah, is the, is the key. Dope, man. Well, thank you for sharing your wisdom and your stories today. It's been fantastic having you on. And oh, thanks. Been yeah. You for a while. What is the future hold for you, man? What's, uh... What is um, in store? Well, uh, so in these these three bands, they all, um, funny enough, they've all decided that they want to record uh, this summer. So I've got <laughs> multiple recording projects going on uh, this summer. Burrito Seagull just cut some songs last night, and we'll be working on overdubs and mixing over the next like couple months with those. Futon Blonde is about to start our recording prep season here this next month uh getting ready to record a bunch of uh songs that we've been playing live for a while but we're gonna finally put them on put them on a record and we do all the recording at, at uh jansen our lead singer's house right now so that's gonna be like a couple month process mm. and then dimart we're shopping around looking at different studios right now trying to to find the best match for um for our sort of debut EP mm-hmm. that we're that we're gonna release here, hopefully <laughs> you know before the end of the year, and then uh, while doing all that stuff, I think you know we'll, we'll have some gigs, yeah, you know, throughout throughout the summer. I'm looking forward to all of all of it, and um, yeah, maybe a little tour in the future. There's been a little some murmurs of trying to book a tour with Futon Blonde and uh, um, some other band buddies of ours. So like. None of that's set in stone, but you know, it's exciting to talk about and yeah. stuff to look forward to. Um, I really like recording, so I'm, I'm kind of stoked on that. Yeah, that's great, man. Any recording time you can get, that's like, you know, really what opportunity to level up there, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, that's awesome. So on Instagram, you got, uh, it's just Futon, at Futon Blonde, right? Yeah, and Futon Blonde. At Dimart The Band. At Dimart The Band. Yeah. And then we got at Burrito Seagull on Instagram as well. Oh, yeah check them out guys check out the groups um yeah steve knows how to groove guys brings some awesome music and uh, i know you guys have got some music online already especially with like futon blonde yeah futon's got several things burrito's got some things on youtube uh yeah 
yeah, Dimart music out soon. I promise I grew better than I than I can talk and uh, ram, ramble <laughs> ramble on a podcast. It's great having you on. Um, Jim, <laughs> so yeah, dude, check them out. It's all the time. Um, yeah, thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thanks, Andy, it. man. Appreciate you. There you go. Boom.